Close your eyes and focus on your breath. When you breathe in, know you're breathing in. When you breathe out, know that you're breathing out. Try to stay with the sensation of breath as continually as you can. If your mind winders off after other sounds or other thoughts, just drop them, and you'll be right back at the breath. Breath is home base, here in the present moment. We do this because this is a source for genuine well-being. You learn how to breathe in a way that feels good inside, you stick with the breath, and you get to know it better. You, know what, you get to know what the body needs. And you can re create a sense of well-being just by breathing. It doesn't require a lot of other things. And when you can do that, then you find yourself be able to look at the other things that you run after in the course of your life for happiness. You realize that a lot of them aren't really worth the effort. You get a little bit of pleasure, but then there's a lot of pain that follows, a lot of trouble that follows. So you want to look for a kind of happiness that doesn't turn on you. That requires also it's a happiness that doesn't harm anybody, because if your happiness harms other people, they're not going to stand for it. So show some respect for your mind, because there is a part of everybody's mind that wants a happiness that's true, that's unchanging. And all too often we've been told, well, it doesn't exist, and so we give up on it. But that desire is still there. This is one of the reasons why we bow down so much to the Buddha, is he said that we should respect that desire, because that's a part of ourselves that's really worthy of respect. Everything we do is for the sake of happiness, but some desires for happiness are not worthy of respect at all. They cause harm to yourself, they cause harm to other people. They give you happiness that doesn't last, and it's not worth the effort. He says that there are things that you can do that are really are worth the effort in, in the search for happiness, and the happiness is blameless. You can be generous, you can be virtuous, follow the precepts, like the precepts we took just now, against killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, taking alcohol and other drugs that befuddle the mind. And when we see other people doing those things, we don't like it. So we should learn how to look at our own actions and say, well, these things are not worth doing either. And in, doing, and in being, making sure that you don't break the precepts under any circumstances, as the Buddha says, you give universal safety to everybody. In other words, from your corner where you're responsible, there's no danger for the world. So generosity, virtue, and then there's the meditation. You develop goodwill for yourself, goodwill for others. Try to develop the qualities in mind that make you more reliant, self-reliant inside. And this way your happiness doesn't infringe on anyone else's. It doesn't conflict with anyone else's true happiness. And when we look for happiness in this way, that's how we can have peace in the world. If we look for peace by going around trying to straighten everybody else out, well, this is what the world has been doing for who knows how long. Everybody's trying to straighten everybody else out without straightening themselves out. No wonder there's conflict. Or we may look for happiness in terms of material gain, status, praise, physical pleasures. But those things don't last. And many times when you gain something of that, that sort, other people have to lose. So again, it's a kind of happiness that creates divisions, whereas the happiness that comes from virtue, comes from generosity, comes from meditation, helps to erase boundaries. And yesterday we noticed that the, the ordination it was like one very large family getting together because everyone was sharing, everyone was being generous. It's when you start charging for things, that's when you set up barriers. When you try to gain advantage over the people, you try you gain barriers there as well. So look at how you look for happiness and ask yourself, wouldn't it be better if you could find a happiness that didn't cause any divisions outside and didn't cause any trouble for you inside? Well, that's what the Buddha offers in terms of his teachings on generosity, virtue, and meditation. So these are skills that we should work on, learning what kind of generosity we're capable of giving so it doesn't harm ourselves, doesn't harm others, learning how to look after the precepts so that you don't become a scourge on other people. In other words, you're looking after your behavior. You don't start preaching to others about theirs. And learning how to meditate in a way, learning how to train your mind in a way so that you can find happiness inside. These are all skills that take some time to do well. But they're kind of skills that create harmony throughout the world. Everybody likes generous, generosity. Everybody likes other people who are virtuous, the people who can keep their minds under control. So that's your contribution to the world when you train yourself to be that sort of person, too. And you find that in having respect for this desire for a true happiness, you become a whole person worthy of respect. Because after all, we're all looking for happiness, but it's the people who know how to look for happiness in a harmless way, in a way that's helpful to other people. 
those are the people that we feel genuine respect for in the world. So the Buddha is showing you this is how you can become a person like that. <laughs>